Welcome, Anirup and Tom. Uh, I'm Abhishek. I'm the CEO and co-founder of AppSmith. Uh, I'm really excited to talk to both of you about how you use AppSmith at uh, Twilio as well as at Omron. Uh, so I'll have a few questions that uh, that I'm going to ask both of you to learn about your experiences. Uh, before we dive in, uh, I'd love for each one of you to introduce yourself. So maybe Anirup, you could go first. Yeah. Okay. Hey, nice, nice meeting you. Uh, nice meeting you, Tom, too. Uh, so I'm Anirup. So I'm the I'm the principal product manager at Twilio. Uh, so my responsibilities are looking into how we can. Um, improve front-end development experience at Twilio. So, so how we can do it at the console, but how for also for the internal tools. Tom? Thanks, Anirup. Yeah, hi. Uh, Tom Zwick. I'm the Director of Data Services and Digital Transformation at Omron in the Om Omron Americas region. Um, mainly, my job revolves around managing our data warehouse, um, Power BI environment, uh, MDM environment, and um, integrations. So nice, nice to meet both of you. Great to be here. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. So uh, let's let's start off with our uh, with the first question. Uh, could you share a story about the project that you've undertaken using AppSmith? Uh, what what inspired it? What was the journey like uh, of building it? Yeah, I I can go first. Um, so for, so for us. Um, uh, one of the first applications that uh, we, we wanted to use AppSmed to build for was, uh, was an application called 360. Uh, mm -hmm. app. So, so Tulio, as you know, is, is a big company. We have a lot of different product teams. Uh, we also uh, had some acquisitions um, in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, so we wanted to have a 360 view of the customer, um, of like you know who the customer is, what are the products they're using across all uh, all the business units. Uh, so that's the first application that we have been looking to build with AppSmith. Um, the first use case is more uh, for uh, for sales, uh, for, for mm -hmm. the sales people at Twilio and see how they know like which customer is using what. And the future, we want to expand it to other use cases like compliance uh, um, and, and different teams. But that's, that's what we're looking to build. Great. Thank you. And uh, this these particular users, you said these were uh, this was the sales team. Uh, were these like SDRs, AEs? Uh, what what yeah. roles uh, was these? Uh, yeah, so users of? the use of the application that we are targeting is, mm -hmm. is like AEs, uh, you know, SDRs. That that's what mm -hmm. we target initially. Um, so those those are the, the folks from those teams are the ones who uh, are looking to use the application. Okay, got it. Got it. Thanks, thanks, Anirudh. Uh, Tom, I would love to hear about uh, the applications that you've built at Omron and your team has built at Omron. Yeah, I wanted a little bit talk about kind of the um, how we even got to a tool like AppSmith. Um, mm -hmm. When when we discovered AppSmith, it was something I'd been looking for 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 um, many years. Actually, mm -hmm. five year five years ago, we had a project where. We, we were um, building this uh, application that was going to live in our data warehouse, but we had these control tables and mm -hmm. we needed the ability for to have a user interface on top of these control tables five years ago because we didn't want to have to have our, our users to have to um, open a ticket to have uh, mm -hmm. an application support person write a query to change the data. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, at the time, um, it didn't seem like the market was supporting that. And then we mm -hmm. had to rewrite this application recently, a year ago. And so I started doing some more research and then I discovered AppSmith and it le looked like the perfect application of, you know, creating a quick application that um, a developer could easily learn and spin up a tool. So we put on top of about 12 different control tables, we put a user interface on top of these so that now uh, a user can instantly go and use the user interface in order to change these values that will then impact the data loads in our data warehouse. Mm -hmm. And and basically it solved the huge um, user, it basically increased the user satisfaction, it created, increased the speed to delivery, and it was mm -hmm. a very cost-effective tool to implement, um, very easy to develop. And so that was the first um that was the first tool that we implemented on it and it was more of a utility tool but but mm -hmm. we've also used it in tools like it's great for building logs uh log mm -hmm. viewers for your 
your right. customers. So for instance, we have any, I run the integration team. So we have integrations between systems and, and when, when um, an exception happens, we love giving the end user who's responsible for the integration a view into what the error was so that they could then go correct the issue. Um, mm -hmm. So it's been great for that. Um, it's, we find it very useful to use AppSmith to supplement applications that are already in there where you need to create a quick interface to mm -hmm. something. Um, so that, that's been the, the big value for us at Omron. Nice. Thanks for sharing that, Tom. Though those sound uh, really interesting. Uh, you mentioned you use a data warehouse. Uh, what data warehouse do you use? Yeah, that's that's the other thing I like about AppSmith is you have a lot of pre-built connectors. We use Snowflake, mm -hmm. and you have a pre-built mm -hmm. connector into Snowflake, but um, it works with all the major database platforms. I've connected it to SQL Server, to Postgres, mm -hmm. um, a lot of different APIs we've connected it to. So it's it's a very good tool to connect to a lot of the existing technology that you have at your 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 company. Got it. And uh, and you mentioned previously your end users did not have the capability to edit these control tables. Uh, who are these users, and uh, what kind of uh, what kind of utility are they benefiting from because of AppSmith? Yeah. So the users that we typically deal with are in our data science group. We're working mm -hmm. a lot with them to load data that they're using then to analyze, um, whether it be point of sale data, you know, mm -hmm. um, data out of our um, CRM environment, out of our customer service environment. But it's usually users that are um, actively working with the data within our data warehouse, data science group, I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. So, uh, so these are like data scientists and uh, other uh, data analysts and engineers Correct. Who are using AppSmith. Okay, yep. got it. Understood. Uh, uh, question for you, Anirup. Uh, what kind of value have your users seen from this customer 360? Uh, what exact utility has uh, has this particular app served for your users that did not exist before? Yeah, um, that's a very good question. So earlier, we did not have a single place where you can go and know who our customers and how they're using the different services, right? So right. we have, uh, you know, different acquisitions, different products. Mm -hmm. You have to go to different tools to see how the customer is using it. So as, as, a, mm -hmm. as a user, you will have to log into all those different tools mm -hmm. to figure out how that customer is using it. With a 360, mm -hmm. You can log in into a single uh, application interface, mm -hmm. and you can you can search for the customer, and you can see how they are using the different products. So, it it has made it much much easier for uh, for those sales uh, folks in there to kind of like uh, know who the customer is and how they're using Toyo. Nice, that's uh, that's pretty cool to hear. From what it sounds like, before AppSmith, you said they were all logging into different other applications. Uh, to find the data, were these all other custom internal applications that uh, that Twilio had built, or were these uh, off-the-shelf products? Uh, yeah, there were custom. We have custom internal tools um, mm -hmm. that have been built. Uh, we also have, you know, we also use we use like different vendors, like you know, mm -hmm. like the normal for sales uh, flow. So we had different vendors mm -hmm. in there. So yeah, so it's right. it's a combination of different tools that that were getting used. Now it's just mm -hmm. like yeah, like you have the possibility of one tool where you can mm -hmm. go and tell the customer um, is using Toyo. Got it, got it. Uh, I have a question, I have a follow-up question for you. Uh, before arriving at the decision to use a low-code platform for these projects, uh, what did you look at before and how did you eliminate those other options? Yeah, so uh, the, the one of the main reasons for using low-code is you can build up something quickly, right? For us, mm -hmm. um, uh, the development traditionally has been you know, you write some React code or you write some mm -hmm. code and then you hook it up to your uh, backend systems. Uh, Loco just made it very easy, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's that's the whole, uh, like, advantage of using the Loco for us, mm -hmm. like, quickly build an application compared to what would, would have been taken uh, in a traditional uh, development uh, mm -hmm. manner. Got it. Yeah, and, and considering uh, uh, you guys at Twilio, you're obviously staffed with a lot of engineers who are able to build these applications. Uh, what convinced you, and rather what convinced your team as well, to actually start relying on a low-code platform? Yeah, um, even though we are staffed with a lot of engineers, we always feel that we need more engineers to do more work. <laughs> uh, and the focus always, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, if I have to prioritize as a, as a product manager, if I have to prioritize between external and internal, my my prioritization mostly will be on the external features, right? Mm. Uh, and that's why like a lot of the times um, you put le less emphasis on the internal tools. With AppSmith, you can build those applications quickly, so you can still provide uh, the features and everything that that the internal team members and users are looking to do their jobs. So, so it's kind of like a win-win situation hmm. from a local perspective. Got it. That makes sense. Uh, Tom, uh, I have this. Uh, I have a similar question for you. Uh, how did you arrive at the decision of using a low-code platform versus? Uh, building a platform on your own uh, since you know you have data scientists and engineers i'm assuming you've looked at some python frameworks and other ways of achieving what you needed to achieve yes oh my gosh you mentioned python frameworks there's tons <laughs> of python frameworks out there that you can actually build a uh, front end web it you got the django framework you yeah. you have um, nice gui which is out there um, you have a lot of different platforms that can do what AppSmith does. The problem is um, some of them are open source, which means you have to support the environment yourself or you have to have someone hosted who has expertise in it. And at the end of the day, it was a lot simpler to just go um, basically go with a SaaS platform where we, you just buy the licenses and you're up and running instantly. And um, we chose to implement our Envir our AppSmith environment inside of a container within AWS. So the nice thing mm -hmm. is we're actually not running off your cloud, but it's a nice way to run it out of our um, own data center without having mm -hmm. to uh, manage a lot of um, manage a lot of hardware and servers and mm -hmm. stuff. So I think you guys have made it great, um, easy to implement, and um, and it's just not something we want to do. We don't want to maintain um, with web development, you right. know, uh, system. So that's why we went the AppSmith route, um, pretty much because we didn't want to become the owners and have to start managing the infrastructure. We're a very small IT team, so we like to we like to go SaaS wherever possible and not have to build mm -hmm. the environments that we want to develop. And um, it's it's funny that you're from Twilio because we're actually. We're actually trying to implement AppSmith into your Twitter Verify to do email, oh. uh, you know, one-time passwords. So um, you guys had you guys actually do a great job of documenting um, how to use your APIs. I was literally working on your platform this weekend. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. I'm glad the documentation. Nice. Is here. Yeah, Twilio's documentation is amazing. Like, I think uh, it, it's it's like an inspiration for us as well. So that's well and actually actually AppSmith is good too. AppSmith, um, you guys are really good also. Um, that's one of the things I like about your tool is the documentation is great, the support is great. You know, I've only actually have to open one ticket with you guys and it was mm -hmm. handled instantly and and it was a really good experience. But at the end of the day, your products rock solid. So it didn't don't, don't require opening tickets, but um, the documentation is very good out there. Uh, yeah, really glad to hear that. We do put in a lot of effort there. So uh, very happy to hear that. Uh, Tom, I have a follow-up question for you. Uh, when it comes to deciding building of new applications uh, and prioritizing what applications to build, uh, how do you, uh, what, what approach do you take there? Uh, and how do you decide uh, which one should you use low code for versus which one should you use uh, you know, more traditional code for? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, we're a small ID department. We do not have mm -hmm. a lot of developers. So mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, our platforms really fall into two different types of, of um, development. We're either buying a off the shelf product and then mm -hmm. using their um, using whatever capabilities they have to add on to the platform mm -hmm. or we're building something outside of it. But if we go outside mm -hmm. of um, the existing platform, what we usually do is we we will go to a tool like AppSmith to build it because we're not we're not big enough to go build a custom application from scratch in a you know in a web development framework. We we would really either develop it in the context of the application we're working in, or we would mm -hmm. go to AppSmith. How that would be determined is we have a process where we intake projects, and based on that, mm -hmm. a solution architect would work with our enterprise architect to determine the solution and determine if it would go into AppSmith. 
Hmm. Understood. That makes sense. Uh, Anirudh, you know, what about at Twilio? How does the process of managing like the application backlog work? How do you choose? Uh, should it be traditional code? Should it be low code? Yeah. So I think uh, so. First, we don't have a centralized team, uh, right? Mm -hmm. so it's a lot of different uh, product teams, different business mm -hmm. units. Uh, so everyone manages their own backlog as such. Mm -hmm. Right. We also build some tools as a central platform team. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just like decentralized process across across the company, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, and and the different teams would decide what's important tooling that they need. Um, mm -hmm. From a uh, from a from a decision making process on when to use low code and when to hand code. Um, mm -hmm. By default, uh, our guidance would be to use low code because mm -hmm. uh, that, in most cases, should be faster than having to hand code uh, application. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you know there there are going to be use cases where you know there's network connectivity, existing uh, you know uh, architecture, and how rest of the internal stuff work where where hand coding mm -hmm. makes more sense. So, but but it comes down to is uh, like the guidance is for the teams like by default uh, explore mm -hmm. your code, uh, and if that doesn't work, then then look into uh, an hand hand coded solution. Got it. Understood. Uh, according to you. Uh, what types of projects or tasks are best suited for a low code platform like AppSmith? I so if you if you ask me like what the tool based on what the tool can do today, right? So mm -hmm. it's about um, any internal tooling that you're looking to, right? So mm -hmm. uh, so if you if you look from an internal tooling perspective, you're going to have um, people in support. So there's mm -hmm. going to be support tools. You're going to have people in sales. Um, and marketing, so you you, you know, so you need you can build those tools for for the sales users, and mm -hmm. you also will have people in operations, um, mm -hmm. and you will also have tools uh, for the operations, right? So, it's it's like a wide category of users who help run uh, the internal operation, the support. Um, I think those are the tools that you can really build with Aspen, mm -hmm. uh, really bring the value for them. Because sometimes mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things where um, you can people sometimes would have to step click many, many ways or have to like go to a CLI to figure out the things. Mm -hmm. If you could just provide a UI interface for it, of course, and control with right permissions and authorizations, it makes it so easier uh, for the people mm -hmm. doing this. Got it. That makes sense. Thanks. Thanks, Anirup. So Anirup and Tom, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, those were my questions. Thank you so much for answering them and uh, describing how you use AppSmith and for your time today. Yep, thanks, and thanks. Dear. As customers of both of you guys, uh, keep up the great work. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, thanks Andrew. Bye.